Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content that you need to know in order to dominate on test day. So today we'll be going through a practice question again. This is related to the integumentary system. This is one of the larger systems of the other systems. So if the big three contain about 75% of the test, now we get into the other systems, including integumentary, metabolic endocrine, gastrointestinal, genitourinary, lymphatic system interactions, and the non-systems. Certainly, there are a lot of these other systems. However, each of these is only a, a much smaller representation on the test. And so therefore, as you're going through the content, be sure to study proportionately. And what I mean by that is that you need to spend time on the big systems, certainly the most time on the big systems, and a proportionate amount of time on the little systems. Don't forget about them, but don't over worry about them either. So before we get started, just a quick reminder that we're just finishing up our crash course for exam day. We do run a crash course three weeks before every exam. And this is one of the, the most popular product we have really is that it's a great way to go through the content right before test day. We get lots and lots of folks who take advantage of that. And the, the feedback has been categorically positive how they say, oh, you know, you guys just talked about what I saw on the test. It was something that that uh, I knew the answer to because we'd just gone over it. And so sometimes it helps just to put it in a fresh voice, a fresh, really just putting it in, in perspective of the test, and it tends to stick. Uh, one of the fun things we'll be doing, and we try to do this in every crash course, just kind of depending on our schedule, but we do a brain dump session, talk about what to put on your brain dump for test day, talk about test day strategies, as well as tons and tons of practice questions together. We try to make it a, a fun, very quick review. If you're looking for a robust review to go over all of the systems on the test, be sure to check out our VIP class, and that's the one that I run personally. I think you'll enjoy that. That includes all of the systems on the exam. It includes all of our exams in the exam simulator. As of this recording, we have six practice exams available to you as a part of the VIP class. So lots of mini courses, mini modules. It really is a very robust product, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And again, it's, it's what you need if you have to pass this test you'll want to sign up for the VIP class. All right, so today let's talk the integumentary system. Again, there's somewhere between nine and 12 questions related to the integumentary system. We'll go ahead and talk about the interventions portion of that. Uh, as you can see, those of you watching the YouTube version of this, I, have, I'll, I post the question so you can see it. Plus, it's also important to recognize that in the integ system, we have examination, differential diagnosis, and intervention all across. So, all right, here's your practice question. A patient with a venous insufficiency ulcer is receiving wound care interventions. The patient is currently using a wound vacuum-assisted closure device. Which of the following techniques is most important when using a wound vacuum-assisted closure device? So we have basically which of the following techniques is most important to use when using a vacuum-assisted closure device. Number one, apply a positive pressure via the portable pump. Two, Change the wound dressing every four to six hours for the first two days. Three, ensure an airtight seal over the foam with a polyurethane sheet. And four, use a closed cell foam material in the shape of the wound. So we have one, apply a positive pressure via the portable pump. Two, change the wound dressing every four to six hours for the first two days. Three, ensure an airtight seal over the foam with a polyurethane sheet. And four, use a closed cell foam material in the shape of the wound. Well, as you guessed it, the and probably not just guess, you knew this one, but a wound vac or a vacuum assisted closure device is most effective when you have an airtight seal over the polyurethane sheet. So option C is the correct one. You don't apply a positive pressure, rather it's a negative pressure. So number one was apply positive pressure, that's, that's incorrect. You would want to apply a negative pressure via the portable pump. So this is what would be considered a sub-atmospheric pressure, or it's very sucky. <laughs> it is sucking. It is a vacuum that's trying to slurp all of the the exudate out of the wound. In fact, there's there are even some devices that they'll go on a cycle and they will they will pump a saline solution to irrigate the wound, and then they'll suck it back out again. That way, they can help to to mostly get bacteria out of there, keep any bacteria from from colonizing in there and making it bad news for the patient. 
So proper application of a wound vacuum assisted closure device or wound vac includes using an open cell, open cell reticulated foam. Open cell means that the fluid can travel between the cells, whereas a closed cell means that the fluid, it's, you can't, can't communicate any fluid from the bottom to the top or side to side. Rather, you need an open cell reticulated foam dressing, meaning that the exudate can travel through the foam, an airtight seal and negative sub atmospheric pressure. And then as far as the use of the wound vacs, the nice part or the one of the advantages of a wound vac is that you don't have to change it quite so often, meaning that you're able to pull the exudate out into an external reservoir so that you don't have to always change the wound dressing. Now you will have to change it probably every few days, but certainly not multiple times a day if it's applied properly, you should be able to get a few days for sure out of it. Sometimes these things are left on for up to a week. I've even seen it up to 10 days. It just depends on the amount of exudate and the effectiveness of the airtight seal. Uh, very often that's what starts to fail is that as the patient is moving and you know as their skin layers are shedding up, it just it makes it hard to keep that airtight seal. So that's one of the biggest concerns. But really, wound vac, these are extremely effective, especially for like a post-surgical wound when you worry about lots of exudate or uh, trying to prevent any type of infectious process. And then, and we're talking obviously large wounds here. And then for slow to heal wounds, I've seen it used very frequently for like a venous stasis ulcer, even arterial ulcers, something to help keep the bacteria out, keep the exudate out so you can keep the wound moist but not overly wet and keep the skin very dry. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. That was your practice question about the integumentary system. Be sure to check out all of the other podcast episodes we have, all the other practice questions. And uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review over on Google Play or Apple iTunes or Spotify, wherever it is you listen to this podcast. I'll catch you in the next episode. Happy studying. Keep a grin on your chin. Will Crane fist bumps all around. Talk to you soon. Thanks.